Hi, this is Paul Soltz from iPhone Dev TV. I'm going to give you a quick introduction to Xcode before we actually open it up, just so I can explain the different parts and we can get started with our very first iPhone app. We're going to be learning a little bit about the iPhone controls, some of the names for things. We'll be using the code names so that you can identify what they are. And I'll show you a little bit about outlets and actions. This is how we can connect our user interface to our code, and then we can manipulate the interface with our code, or we can get user input and do some processing if we need to in our applications. And then I'll step you through running an app and how that will work. We're gonna be working on an app right now called Days to Weeks. This is a simple calculator that just takes one value, a text entry for days, and it will convert it into weeks. So if I give you 21 days, you would tell me that that is three weeks long. And so we want the app to do that for us. And we have a convert button along the bottom. So let's break down how this app is going to look with the iOS controls. At the very high level surrounding everything, which is our canvas, is the UI view. And so this is going to contain all of the user interface elements that we're going to add and let's see at the top. At the top, we have our status bar. Depending on your application, you can show or hide this. If you're doing a full screen game, you generally hide the status bar because it gets in the way. But if you're doing a utility style app, you would like to have that available and it can actually frustrate users when they can't see the status bar. So don't hide the, the status bar unless you have a really good reason to hide it. You can see that all the content here is centered and I'll show you how to do that. It's pretty straightforward with the drag and drop tools and the interface designer. Along the right side here, these rectangles are UI text fields. So these are areas where the user can tap and then they can type in input or we can also put some kind of text or numbers in there as well. So we can programmatically grab the value from the user that they're typing in, or we can change the, the values in these. So these are a great way to have some kind of user interaction. On the bottom, we have a UI button. This is a button on iOS 7. They removed all of the sort of eye candy around the button. And we have something that looks more like a hyperlink. You can turn backgrounds on and you can do custom buttons. So if you still like the old style buttons, it is possible to do that. But out of the box, we'll just see something that looks like a hyperlink. And then along the top and the left sides, we have UI labels and we have three different ones. We can change the font size in these and move them around however we need to position them. So this is a great way to give updates or to identify what a certain text field is for or what a button might do and sort of just clarify what the different things in your app are so that the user understands what's going on. Now we're going to talk about outlets and actions. So this is the, the step where we can combine both our user interfaces and our code files together so that they can work seamlessly. When we want to get data from or set data into a user interface element. So if I wanted to print a number out, or if I wanted to read a number in, we need to set up an IB outlet. We can do that by dragging a connection between the user interface element, so the UI text field, to our code file, and Xcode will actually auto-generate this code for us. Now, you can write this code by hand, and that might be good to try once or twice, but it's a lot easier if you just let Xcode do it for you. So when we create an IB outlet for a user interface element, it will create a property. It's going to have some default attributes, non-atomic and weak. And along the right side on the top lines, you'll see IB outlet. IB outlet just identifies that this is a piece of code that is connected to the user interface. And so this just allows the compiler to figure out how your code and your interface files are connected. Then you'll see that we have the UI text field, class name, 
and then we create our variable. So we've got days text field and we have weeks text field. I use very verbose names for my properties or my variables so that I know exactly what they are. It's a lot better to use days text field instead of just days because normally when you say days, I think of an integer or maybe a floating point value and I, I wouldn't think that it would be a text field. So having the text field sort of clarifies what we're talking about, especially when we have 10 to 20 different variables in our classes. We can connect a uh, action or a button to a function or a method that we can run in a very similar process. We just drag a connecting line and Xcode will actually insert this code for us. So we don't have to write this unless we really want to and then we can focus more on the actual implementation details rather than the whole connection process. So we see here IB action. This really is just void. So it's a void return type function, but the IB action is a special keyword that the compiler can identify and then link your code to your user interface appropriately. Let's look at one of these methods. If you've never seen an Objective-C method, they can look a little bit strange or a little bit different than a C style or a Java method. We've got our dash on the left for a non-static function. It'd be a plus if it was static. Then we have a return type, which is currently void. It's an IB action. And then we have the name of the method, convert button pressed. Again, I'm being very verbose here. I'm using... Uh, the name of the button and then I'm using a verb so that I know that it's related to the button and that an action is going to happen. After that we see the semicolon, the parentheses for the return type. ID is sort of like void star if you're familiar with that from C. And then we have sender which is the name of the, the variable. And so when we actually run this, sender is the, the object that triggers the action. And in this case that would be a UI button. On the second line here, we have NS log and we have a print statement. So this is a C style function call. And this is how we print stuff to our console window, uh, which we'll see in a little bit. Here we're using an Objective-C string and you can see that it is that because of the at symbol in front of the quotation marks. After that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the days in a floating point format from the text field. So this is assuming that the user has already tapped on the text field. They've typed in a number of days, let's say 14, and now we wanna get that value. So 14 is currently stored as a chunk of text and it's not a numerical value that we can do math calculations on. And so in order to get it, we'll use our self pointer, which is part of every object in Objective-C and we have the property so we can say self dot text field to access our property and then the days text field has a attribute or property called text which is an ns string which stores all the text value that is in the current text field so with that object we can now call a method called float value which will do the conversion from a text object to a floating point value. And, and this is a format that we can then do our calculation with. So on our next line, you'll see that days divided by seven is assigned to the value weeks. And so here's where we're doing our conversion. So it'd be 14 divided by seven is going to be equal to two. Now we need to go in the reverse process. On this last line of code, we're going to convert from the numerical value back into our string value. And I'll use a, a new construct. It's the at symbol with the parentheses and then the variable name. And this will allow us to turn our floating point value into an NS number, which is an object. So we're, we're turning a primitive data type into an object. And then we can call a, a method on that object to turn it into a string. So we're really doing two steps on this last long line of code. And now that we have a string value or a text value, we can assign that back to our weeks text field. Again, we'll use the self with uh, the dot accessing the property, weeks text field, and then the text 
property on the UI text field. So once we do that, we've now changed the value and the interface will update and we will see some feedback for the user after they press this button. Now let's go ahead and look at what this is gonna look like in Xcode. Okay, here is Xcode. We're currently on the viewcontroller.m. You'll see .h and .m files in Objective-C applications. Uh, along the left side, we'll also see the app delegate. So you can see all these code files over here. The app delegate is going to be sort of our main starting point for any of our iPhone applications. Below that, we have the main storyboard file, which is our user interface designer. And then view controller goes along with the main storyboard. This is where we connect our code. So the code I have in here is the same code that we were just looking at. And we're just going to step through the different portions of the Xcode interface, just so that you're familiar with the terms when I use them in the coding videos. Along the left side here, we have the project navigator. And this is where we can see any of our code files or our interface files or any libraries that we need to include with our application. It's also where we get access to a bunch of properties along the top here. The, the very top left corner, that's going to be our project navigator. So that's going to show all of this information. Along the top, we actually have a bunch more tabs that we can select. Uh, and we'll use those periodically as we're working on iPhone apps. If we step over on the right side, we're looking at the standard editor. This is our code editor. This is where we can write the code for our iPhone apps. And actually along the top on the right side, you'll see a couple different buttons here. We've got a tuxedo and then we've got sort of a slope or a mountain looking uh, pathway. And those are gonna be some other options where we can show multiple code files or we can look at version control. If we switch over to our main.storyboard file, this is going to show us what the interface is going to look like in our visual sort of editor. And on the right side, we'll see the interface builder. So we'll see the, the app as we've sort of laid it out using the drag and drop tools. And if we come up to the top, we can also hide and show any of these panels on the left side, the right side, or the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and show the right panel. I'm going to hide the left panel just so that we're working with more screen real estate. And when we do that, the, the left panel disappears, and now we see a new right panel. This is our utilities panel. Here we can click on any of our user interface elements like days to weeks, which is a UI label, and we can adjust its properties. We can change its font. We can change its text. We can change the alignment of the text. If it's multiple lines or a single line, if there's a shadow, all of these different attributes we can add to our things. And every different object that we work with in our interface file will have a different set of settings. So we'll be using this a lot. Also along the bottom, you will see a lot of the user interface elements that we can actually drag and drop onto our canvas on the left. So you're looking at the bottom, we have label, button, uh, segment and control, a text field. We can just drag and drop these to design our applications. Next up, let's learn how to run an app. It's pretty straightforward. There is a big run button on the top left corner, just like in iTunes. So you press that button and your application will start. If you have any issues, you'll see that there's issues to fix. And when we actually go and code this up, I'll show you how to get everything working. And then I'll show you what happens when things aren't working. Because a lot of times when we're writing an application, we make mistakes and things won't work right away. So we'll have to learn how to debug our applications and fix those issues. So if I press this button, our iPhone simulator will pop up and we will see the, the text and the components that we designed in our interface builder. So that was our storyboard file. And here we can now interact with them. So if I were to tap on 
the days text field and type in a value and then press the convert button, we would see some results pop up. And so if I typed in 14 on the number pad, we press the convert button, we'd see two. And let's just step through what this is gonna do. I tap convert, that causes this method to run. So we have this IB action that's connected the button to this chunk of code. When we step to the next line, we'll see that the NS log is displayed in our console. So the console is along the bottom panel in Xcode. And here's where we can print out messages. So your console, if you've never used one before, is where you can write out messages to sort of figure out what's going on with your application to, to either debug it or to make sure that things are working appropriately. And we'll use this a lot when we're working on our iPhone apps just to make th sure things are working or calculations are correct. Now, next up, we're going to grab the value 14, and currently that's in text format, so we're converting it from text to a numerical value, a floating point value, and then we can do our math operation on it. Once we do that, we're going to convert back from our numerical value back into the text value, so that's our string value, and we can send that to our user interface. So when we do that, our user interface will update, and we will now see two displayed as we see it in the left side. All right, so in review, we've learned a little bit about the iPhone controls, a, a little on the composition, some of the names for the things, uh, a little bit about the outlets and the actions and how we connect our interface to code and sort of how that looks. We'll be actually running through all of this again in Xcode, and, and we've learned how to run an app. So now that you're a little bit acquainted with the interface of Xcode, it's really time to, to dive deep. So I want you to follow along if you need to in the subsequent videos. Just pause at any time, type in the code, get it working, and, and move on. Uh, periodically, I will have videos that will cover common mistakes or common bugs that you might run into when you're running the app. So if you get stuck somewhere in one of the videos, uh, watch till the end and then see if there's a, a sort of a debugging video or something to help you solve or troubleshoot any of the problems that you might have.